Hi everyone, welcome to Value. So today we're going to talk about how Varu could become the next Moderna. Like Moderna two years ago was a company trading in its teens, like as low as $13 in 2019, 15, 16, you know, dollars, but in the teens nonetheless. And all of a sudden COVID pops out and Moderna is one of the very few companies at the time that is producing a vaccine. Um, and all of a sudden people take interest, the stock market gets hyped. Um, government funding comes in, they do mass trials of this vaccine, it's approved and it gets into production and yet the stock goes as high as $384 and now it's back to $165 but much 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 higher than it was back in 2019 when it was trading at that $13, $14, $15, 16 mark um, and now the biggest question is can Varu kind of do the same thing? And basically, uh, when I was looking at Moderna back in the days, um, and just like following the progress up to now, I can basically see the same steps that are happening. So basically, back then, Moderna was one of the very few companies to have a vaccine. Um, it got a lot of government funding, and it got into the market, and it's been a game changer for this company. Back then, it was around a valuation of like six, seven billion dollars. Now it's at $66 billion, even after falling so much. Like, this company was well over, you know, $100 billion at, at its peak, basically. Um, and we can agree that it's been an amazing performance. So the, the same kind of steps are kind of in a line, right? So we go now with Varu, and we go, Varu has basically come in. They have done some trials of their COVID pill. And it looks to be a game changer as well. Uh, so with, with Mod Mod Moderna, basically you had a situation where the vaccine was seen as the solution to COVID. Uh, back in the days anyway. Uh, we know now it's not the ultimate solution. Uh, so currently with, the COVID, with COVID, you have the vaccine, which is going to help build up your antibodies. And then basically improve your immunity. Uh, but it doesn't mean you don't catch COVID. But now the situation is, if you do catch COVID, um, the next treatment is the COVID pill. And there's only two companies on the market right now, that is Pfizer and Merck. And their supply is constrained, and also their product may not be as good as Veru's. So their products have only proven efficacy around the mild to moderate kind of symptoms. Uh, whereas Veru has proven efficacy in the, in the moderate to severe uh, symptoms. So now we have a clear difference that, hey, Veru potentially could be a, basically a better product. Um, but since they're more focused on the moderate to severe, um, then they're basically two different markets in a sense, even though they're producing the same treatment. Um, so we have a situation here that back in the days, Moderna was one of the very few companies producing the vaccine. Now we have Varu, which is one of the very few companies heading to the market with a COVID uh, pill. So now we have another company very similar, like you can see, kind of like, it's very, the story is very similar, right? Like Moderna was with the vaccine and now Varu is with the pill. And basically, um, I found this article which was incredibly, incredibly insightful of that market opportunity that you could be looking at. So, as it's put here, the title, the COVID pill is here, and Big Pharma will ultimately decide who gets it. Why did they have to decide? Well, because that pill is limited in production right now, and they can't just sell it to everyone. Um, and Moderna has spoken about this, um, and the opportunity it creates, like Pfizer alone, uh, well, I mean Pfizer, not Moderna before, uh, so Pfizer alone, freshly cemented as the global COVID-19 vaccine kingpin, expects to make as much as $22 billion from its new pill this year. Yeah, that's right, you heard it, like $22 billion just this year, never, never mind uh, lifetime or next year or cumulatively, whatever. It's just this year alone. And that's on top of the $37 billion it made from the vaccine. So they, these companies are making a ton of money and you can see how lucrative it is because a lot of people want want these kind of medications for the population. Like a lot of governments anyway. 
Um, and basically, they are not cheap. Pfizer's Paxlovid co- currently costs five hundred and thirty dollars for a five-day course. Like that's more expensive than fine dining, right? Like if that, if, you know. But of course, it's life-changing in in that sense that it could save your life. Uh, Mix Malnupiravir now approved for use in the UK costs about seven hundred dollars which reportedly costs of production for malnupiravir stands at $17.74. So amazingly cheap to produce, amazingly expensive when they sell it. Um, so you have this situation where you can basically see those clear margins, very juicy, juicy margins. Um, and there's only two companies that are really dominating this space right now. And Pfizer, who's basically talked that it's worth $22 billion a year to them. Um, and we're talking about Veru, which is at a billion dollars right now. That's like that's tiny of a va- that's tiny valuation for what they could be in the future. Um, this company, it is not out of the question to say that that potentially they could reach a ten billion valuation in the future, which would be well, you know, into that ten x at the current valuation. Never mind when they were at four dollars forty, right? So we're in a situation where we're looking at a company that could have a game-changing performance and very much so very similar to Moderna. Um, so Moderna did it with the vaccine and potentially we could see it Veru do it with the pill, but though that is contingent on that FDA approval, if they can get FDA approval, then that's a game-changer. This company gets into production, starts selling those pills um, their focus right now is for the moderate to severe patients, which will be mainly hospitals. Um, and one thing as well, like vaccines, um, when you make vaccines, you have temperatures that you have to store them in and a very sensitive top type of products. Whereas when you're making pills, pills can just, the pills are much more versatile. They don't have to be stored at, you know, certain, certain temperatures or whatnot, um, they, you know, they can be transported much more easily. So we have a very versatile product, which is probably cheaper to produce in that sense. And the uh, distribution is also cheaper as well because you're not having to refrigerate it um, in that sense. So now we have a situation that, hey, we're looking at a company that has produced a game-changing pill that uh, could be that actually isn't as costly to get into production because all the steps are simpler for production to uh, basically distribution. And since they're more distributing to hospitals, then they don't have that much training that they have to do as well. And all of a sudden, that's the difference. That This company is selling a product which could basically get huge margins, um, have much more easier manufacturing uh, pathways than the vaccine did, dis- easier pathways than of distribution than the vaccine did, also easier distribution pathways than Pfizer and Merck do, because Pfizer and Merck um, sell at a retail in on with pharmacies, whereas Veru is looking more of a distribution with hospitals, so that you can see there's a clear difference that the road to success is actually much easier for Veru, um, and hence why I believe the company potentially on that FDA approval, so like it is all very contingent on that FDA approval, though you would kind of think they would get it because um, they stopped their trials um, based on some really, really convincing data, and if if that data was that convincing, then potentially, you know, you could, you, at least we have high hopes that it's going to pass with flying colors, though, you know, at the end of the day, uh, FDA decides and that is the whole risk of getting into a stock like this. If you get into a stock like this and they don't get FDA approval, then yes, the stock's going to sink. Um, though it still has a good amount of money. It has well over $100 million in its bank and it has other products on the market which is as commercializing at the moment as well. So it is not an end game for the uh, company that if they don't get this approval that things change. They could continue to get more data and then apply for another approval um, but if they if they do get approval then yeah like this company potentially becomes another Moderna in terms of performance uh, let me know what your thoughts are do you think uh, Veru is one of those companies that could have this performance like 
I know it is still early stages, um, and it was the same thing that was said basically with Moderna, like, I remember the days when I made my, one of my very first YouTube videos, and it was around the COVID vaccine, and I did talk about Moderna and, and that situation, and I remember that, and I just remember all the steps I've gone through, and then I think about how Varu is basically in such a similar kind of pattern, um, that it's kind of, yeah, like hard not to connect the dots. Um, but of course we'll know in the future uh, what the result is. Does Varu become the next Moderna? Very, very highly likely in my opinion, but maybe you might disagree. Um, but that is also contingent on, on that FDA approval. If that FDA approval comes through, then yeah, I think we do have a Moderna. Um, until then, um, good luck investing everyone. If you have any questions, post below. And if you appreciate all the effort that's gone into this video, please like and subscribe. Until then, good luck investing everyone.